In my prayer to the Father, there is repeated what I said at the beginning. It was necessary to rouse the opacity of the Judeans and of the world in general by means of a main miracle. And the resurrection of a man who had been buried four days and had gone down into the tomb after a long, chronic, disgusting, well-known disease is not an event that can leave people indifferent or doubtful. If I had cured him while he was alive, or if I had infused the spirit into him as soon as he had breathed his last, the accredity of enemies might have raised doubts on the entity of the miracle. But the stench of the corpse, the putrefaction of the bandages, the long period in the sepulchre left no doubts. And a miracle in the miracle. I wanted Lazarus to be freed and cleaned in the presence of everybody so that they could see that not only life, but also the wholesomeness of the limbs had been restored, where previously the ulcerated flesh had spread the germs of death in the blood. When I grant a grace, I always give more than what you ask for. I wept before Lazarus's tomb and many names have been given to my tears. In the meantime, you must bear in mind that graces are obtained through grief mixed with unfaltering faith in the Eternal Father. I wept, not so much because of the loss of my friend and because of the sorrow of the sisters, as because three thoughts that had always pierced my heart like three sharp nails surfaced then, more lively than ever, like depths stirred up. The ascertainment of the ruin that Satan had brought to man by seducing him to evil, a ruin, the human punishment of which was sorrow and death. Physical death, the symbol and living metaphor of spiritual death that sin causes to the soul, hurling it into infernal darkness, whereas it was destined, like a queen, to live in the kingdom of light. The persuasion that not even this miracle worked almost as a sublime corollary to three years of evangelization would convince the Judaic world of the truth of which I was the bearer and that no miracle would in future convert the world to Christ. Oh, how grievous it was to be so close to death for so few. The mental vision of my imminent death. I was God but I was also man. And to be the redeemer, I was to feel the weight of expiation. Therefore, the horror of death and of such a death. I was a living, healthy being who was saying to himself, I shall soon be dead. I shall be in a sepulchre like Lazarus. Soon, the most dreadful agony will be my companion. I must die. God's kindness spares you the knowledge of the future. But I was not spared it. Oh, believe me, you who complain of your destiny. None was more sad than mine, because I always clearly foresaw everything that was to happen to me, joined to the poverty, the hardships, the bitterness that accompanied me from my birth to my death. 
So do not complain and hope in me. I give you my peace.